Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings here on The Voice of America. We are so happy and excited today to be joined by a true rock and roll legend, an icon in the business. Not often can you actually say that, but in this case, yes, it applies. We welcome Tommy Lee to The Voice of America and to Border Crossings. It's great to have you, Tommy. Hey, Larry. Thanks for having me, man. This is cool. What a pleasure to be talking to you. It looks like you're in a, in a studio somewhere, probably home studio. Yes, sir. This is my studio here at uh, my house. Um, this is where all the uh, the madness happens. The madness and the magic, too. So And, and the magic, of course. Now, I, I, first of all, I got to start off by saying happy birthday. I guess you just had a birthday a couple weeks ago. Yes, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, happy birthday to you. And uh, so this pandemic thing, this is a crazy times. I mean, how are you coping and dealing with this? Well, you know, for a guy who doesn't leave the house that often, um, it's not, I, and, and I, I mean this with all due respect, it's, it's you know, there, there's some horrible stuff happening out there. But in my, in my world, I don't leave the house that much, so it hasn't really um, affected me and in my in my little world. You know, um, I, I think maybe the only thing that's been different is um, I, I, I've I've slowed down uh, enough to do some 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 really cool stuff, whether it be you know self introspection. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, which is cool because you know how our daily lives we just fl everything's flying by it's got me to slow down almost stop and also catch up on technology um uh you know because every day there's something new and a lot of times you just you, you work and you write and you produce and you don't necessarily get a chance to keep up on a lot of the new technology so it's slowed down enough to let me do that which is really cool because that's important you got to keep up on what all these damn knobs do <laughs> there's a lot of buttons there i'll tell you oh, that man <laughs> your head would go <laughs> <laughs> so it's a strange time to put out a new album too i mean it really adds a whole new dimension you just dropped your third solo album andro and you know it's got to be difficult and, and unique for you because you used to be on the road you're in a business that that requires interaction yeah i know i know it is it is weird and and it was slated to come out earlier um and we 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 you know pushed it way back because it just didn't it just didn't feel right it just definitely didn't feel right yeah the 13th of october yeah 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 there we go so you know releasing it then seemed to be seemed to be uh you know a, a much better time and god if you know if if anything we need you know we need something refreshing and new and fun and something cool to to rock out to so uh it just seemed like a a, a good time and who you are and the stature you've achieved in the business uh, you don't have to do anything to prove anything to anybody anymore but andro's kind of a very different kind of an album you do a prince song you yeah. work with post malone so what's what's going on um it's just you know it's just what i've been up to um since uh, like 2016 motley did its final show mm -hmm. and you know in everybody's minds we were like well this is it we're, you know we're done we're gonna just go out on top and be like that's it thank you good night mic drop <laughs> right and <laughs> And, and that's, and that's what it was. And I told myself, I'm going to take a year off. I'm not going to listen to any music. I'm not going to do music. I'm going to literally hit the reset button and, and just, just stop. And I, I made it almost a year. And then of course I can't sit still very long and <laughs> ideas are coming. And then I just, so what you're hearing uh, it, with Andro was me and, in you know 2017 coming down to my studio and just letting it all out and recording it and so and with me um god since 2000 when i did my first sort of solo venture with methods of mayhem mm -hmm. i've always been on a on a really eclectic uh you know path uh you know style wise i love uh, being a drummer i love 
all kinds of stuff, man. Everything, anything with a funky beat. Um, I love R and B, hip hop, you know, rock, industrial, dance music. You name it. You know, I'm a drummer, so if something moves me, you know, it's, that's beat driven and with a great melody, uh, that's that's that inspires me. So I came down here and started writing, and boom, here we now it's out. When you were mine, I gave you all my money. Why did you pick a Prince song to do? Ah, massive Prince fan. He, I have a collaboration list of people that I would love to work with, always wanted to work with, that sort of thing. And he, he's, he's been on it. And unfortunately, uh, that's never going to happen. God bless him. Um, I've been a, ma a massive Prince fan, and my, a buddy of mine, Lucas, who actually sings on the on the song, uh, came came up to me and said, "Hey, we should redo When You Were Mine." And I, I thought, dude, I, that I mean, there's a million other songs I would th think of, you know redoing when when you were mine is a very up tempo uh you know pop song when you were mine you got i mean it's moving and i and so he so he goes no let, let's why don't we slow it down and, and 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 try it like that and once we slowed it down um it just became really dark and sexy and the lyrics really stood out when you slow it down you really hear what what he's saying there and it's it's some pretty deep stuff when people do covers and it's kind of like just a little bit different mm -hmm. i'm not a fan of that i think if you're going to cover something really like take it and and really mix it up you know mm -hmm. so i'm really happy with the way it uh, came out and a lot of people are loving it that's cool yeah i'm hearing nothing but great things and, and all the reviews have been super and and that's fantastic <laughs> Just tuning in right now and joining us, Tommy Lee is with us from his home studio, and we're talking about his new album, Andrew. Of course, Tommy was, uh, you know, one of Rock's premier drummers, is one of Rock's premier drummers with Motley Crue. You guys put out your first album, 1981, Too Fast for Love. There's a rumor that uh, Motley Crue might be getting back together, might be going on the road again. It's... Yeah, well, I mean, we 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 had said in two in 2016 that was it we were we were done over 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 mm -hmm. and then we got approached by live nation um early uh, this year um and they approached us about doing a stadium tour and we were like what well we weren't really planning on that uh, we, we were going to continue to make music, but not tour anymore. Right. And when they came to us with that, we were, we all kind of like, we all talked and said, well, we've never, I mean, we played many stadiums, but we've never done a stadium tour. And we were got, we got really excited about that. We get excited about doing anything we've never done before. So <laughs> um, we said yes. And all of a sudden, uh, not too not too far after that tickets went on sale uh, on sale and the entire stadium tour sold out in probably two a week and a half mm. and we were like what that's insane <laughs> so literally we had no plans on it until approached about doing a stadium tour and then then the pandemic hit we were set to go june i won't forget the date june 7th we were wow. starting uh in florida and it got postponed and uh so now it's slotted for next uh next summer for so ne sometime uh next june so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you were saying you, we you guys see. get excited over any new project how about a motley crew christmas album how about that's a new project <laughs> That's funny. I, I, I don't think the, the dudes in the crew 
would 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 be down with that but but i it's funny funny you mentioned that because i am working uh and I, I can't tell you the title yet but i'm working on on one i started working on a christmas song um uh a couple of months ago and it was like crazy hot here we were having like a heat a heat wave it was 104 102 and i was here in the studio and the air conditioning's blasting and i just wasn't in the christmas vibe and i went okay i got it going but i'm gonna put this on hold and so coming up now during the, the holidays i'm gonna get back to work on it so so next christmas you'll be hearing something from me all uh, right a christmas I'm looking forward to that Now you talk about a stadium tour and I know you guys have done festivals and all that and you performed at all different venues and all different sizes. Do you have a preference? Do you like the smaller crowd, more intimate, or do you like the giant 50,000, 100,000, you know, Wembley type thing? Oh man, I can't, you know, there's something extraordinary, extraordinarily beautiful about both of them. The intimacy of the small place is unreal. And then how can you not love looking out and seeing, you know, God, I think the biggest venue we played was the us festival. And there was over, I think it was 210,000 people and you couldn't see where it ended. And I literally had, you know, poo poo in my pants. I was like, my God, this is, and we flew over in a helicopter and looking down at that, go, knowing you're about to go down and play for all those people was unbelievably exciting and yet man so so nervous man i had butterflies in my stomach um so they're it's hard to compare the two they're both beautiful man mm -hmm. now you uh you know have been a part of so many things in music and you, i'm sure you have so many stories and there's so many highlights and you guys put out an autobiography back uh, quite a while about 20 years ago called the dirt yeah. any possibility of you writing something us uh, uh, you know Tommy Lee's story because your your story's been an interesting story. Well, I have a I have an autobiography out called Tommy Land that came out. Oh, I want to say like two thousand four. That's a wild book to read. If anybody gets a chance, check that out. Um, it is wild. Yeah. Now, I've been reading a lot about you know some of the things you've been doing uh, during your spare time now with the pandemic and what it is, and one of those things is cooking. Oh so, yeah. You like to cook. I really do, man. I, it's, and, and, and you, you might think, well, yeah, I'm, you know, yeah, you know, like to cook because I like to eat and all that stuff. And I do, but <laughs> I, there's something about cooking for me, at least that is, there's some Zen stuff attached to that. It's like this, it's this quiet time where I put on something super mellow and I really, really enjoy the preparation. I don't know what it is. It's the cutting, getting everything together and the whole process more than actually eating it. So I think that, you know, it, 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 it's something more for me than just cooking. It's really uh, the whole the whole process yeah. it gives me joy. I really dig it. It's the musician in you. The whole, there's a process to putting together music. Same thing, the ingredients. It, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's what so you, you I'm sorry. I, I said, you're probably exactly right. It's like you're making a song, but with different ingredients. Right, right, right. Different spices, <laughs> different ingredients, all kinds there you of go. <laughs> now, you've starred in a couple of reality shows. Is there any uh, any other reality show coming up for Tommy Lee? Uh, you've had your own TV shows on NBC, the Tommy Lee story, and you had you know, a whole bunch of shows. Not that I not that I know of. <laughs> I don't know. There, you know, I'm I get offered to do those kind of things all the time, and I I, I turn a lot of them down. Um, the ones that I've done, I did for a specific purpose like um the one where i went to college 
I I never got a I never got the opportunity to go to college. I got a record deal at 17, my senior year of high school. I split. I went and recorded and toured the world. I was like, whatever with the diploma. So when I had the opportunity to go to college, especially in Middle America in Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a trip. I'm gonna enjoy it, and this is gonna freak some people out. And and then I did the other one that I did was it was called Rockstar Supernova and it was a chance to bring real music to primetime television um uh, and you know and, and it wasn't like your sort of you know uh, American Idol karaoke style stuff that we have wow you have done so many things with so many people it's so hard to keep up with you I am a busy guy man I'm a busy guy <laughs> yeah you were on the road with Smashing Pumpkins too um, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah well I, I actually I played on the on the last uh, Smashing Pumpkins album. I didn't go on tour with them, but I d I recorded all the drums on that record. Mm. Why the drums? I mean, has it has it always been the drums for you? What what is it that drew you to the drums? I you know, from what my parents say, as soon as I was like, you know, able to like kind of stand up a little bit and get into the, all the cabinets and pots and pans and you know spoons and I, they said at a really young age I was always making racket my poor parents always playing drums but then i started taking piano lessons and then tap dancing and ballet and uh and i've just i've just like i've taught myself how to play guitar and i i just man any instrument i i if i see one i'll just go up to it and start playing it and if i can't play it i'll figure it out hmm. what are you listening to in your off time i mean when you when you have off time <laughs> Um, I listen to um, sometimes, uh, you know, t just to get it because I when I'm working on music, uh, I listen to something uh, that you would probably be like, what? I listen to everything from Andrea Bocelli, some, you know, you know, that kind of beautiful, uh, uh, you know, operatic stuff to, to sort of like zend out spa music you know uh just calming meditation sounds mm -hmm. um some even some edm i heard well edm i all that that's, that's like I'm that's, all, your, that's your track huh? that's your tune edm yeah, I, I i make it i listen to it um but you know you were asking me what i listened to kind of in my 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 downtime i listen to the more mellow stuff in my downtime but when i'm rocking I'm, I'm all over it. Mm. What's your favorite place to, to tour? I mean, you were being heard now out of the U.S. in a hundred different countries. So, and you there probably isn't anywhere you haven't performed or been. So, favorite yeah. places. Favorite places. Well, yeah. we're talking about Japan, so I, I know that's that's a lot of people's favorite places. Japan is Japan is awesome. It's awesome. It's weird. Um, yeah, that place is a trip. You know, you're sitting there playing. And all, all, all these Japanese people are singing the words in English. You're like, how is this possible? Is <laughs> English is the first language they teach in, in Japanese schools, so I guess that makes sense. But Japan's awesome, and you've got your like super hardcore. Like in America, you got Detroit. Those guys love their 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 music there. Um, oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's a great spot. To, always a great spot to play. Um, Australia is a great place to play. There's so many places throughout Europe. Um, and I noticed that the Europeans are a lot. They're really passionate about their music. You know, if mm -hmm. it starts, if it starts to rain at a festival in America, you know, girls are like, oh, my hair is wet. Oh, I'm getting wet. Let's get out of here. Where in Europe, they sit out there and just they don't care if they're this high in mud they'll play in it like pigs like just <laughs> just 
they they do not care and their their passion for music is just beyond like no weather could stop it no nothing they're going in yeah you mentioned you know how you can perform in a in a country where they don't speak english but they know all the lyrics to your music to, to motley Crue's music it, it, yeah. it, it's just amazing that's a testament to to the impact you guys have had on people around the world and you talk about also the the way that people listen in other countries i've been told from musicians who've performed other places that people pay closer attention to the lyrics in other countries than america you know, I, th I think they do because, the, you know, they're trying to figure out what you're saying. So they're probably spending more time sort of dissecting or translating and figuring out what it is that, that you're saying, where in America, you're, the English language probably just blows by most of the words. You know, they've heard them a million times. So uh, unless the lyrics are really specific or really special, do you probably even pay that much attention? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So when you're not doing music, I think you, you like to tinker with motorcycles and cars. I do. I mean, I've always loved that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's there's nothing cooler than than jumping on your motorcycle. Well, let me take that back. Ever since the the helmet law passed, you know, years ago in California, it's kind of taken some of the fun out of it because I really that there's nothing better than the your hair blown in the wind and going for a ride. Um, and I get it with the helmet. Yeah, it's it's the right thing to do. It's safe, I get it. But I, I really like that. I really enjoyed that part of it. Mm -hmm. um, love cars, I mean, geez. What's your favorite car in your garage right now? Um, is probably my Rolls Royce uh, Wraith. That's, that's what I have now, um, but then I, the, the other spectrum is uh, I have another car. It's a it's a hybrid. It's called a it's called a, uh, a it's called a Karma. It's made by Fisker. It's electric, um, and that's really cool too, man. It's really cool to like go by the gas station with your middle finger up there, ah. you know, like <laughs> see, no, don't need no gas, bro. That's it. Not today. <laughs> Not today, dude. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> it is it is it is cool and it's better for the environment and um and there's something else really cool about electric cars um and i was telling my friend this the other day where were the electric cars back in the day where i was coming home trying to sneak in late and not wake up the girlfriend you know <laughs> and and with an electric car, you can't hear, you, you pull up, it's like pulling up in a golf cart and then creeping into the house and jumping into bed you would never know you, you were even out late. Where, God, where was an electric car then? <laughs> oh my gosh. That sounds great. Well, you know, you sound happy. You sound like you're in a good place. You sound like you're feeling good. I, I heard a new story. You said you've never felt better and oh, everything great. is going well for you health wise. You're feeling good these days. Yes, sir. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, it's good to be alive, man. It's really mm. good to be alive. Yeah, and I know you're working uh, hard uh, on behalf of the uh, the animals. I know you work with PETA. Always, man. Always. I can't. I can't get enough of those beautiful creatures. How many pets you got at home? Oh my God! It's like a freaking zoo around here. There's, <laughs> there's a wiener dog. There's a Yorkie, there's a koi pond full of giant koi fish, there's turtles, birds, uh, am I missing anything? Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, wow. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of animals here, well, it, <laughs> including you're myself. Just, you're helping the planet, you're helping the animal kingdom, and that's great. And of course, you're, you're helping a lot of people with therapy. That's what it's about. Andro's a great album, like you said earlier, this is... A, People needed it. It's the right time. And, and yes. hopefully we'll get through all of this stuff. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of stuff happening in the world right now. And hopefully we'll, we're in you know, light at the end of the tunnels coming. That's good, man. Yeah. I, I hope, I, I hope the record, uh, you know, cuts through the static because there's definitely a lot. And now, man, the world is in such a crazy place. So hopefully, uh, you know, you can put on the record and just check out for, uh, what is it? Probably an hour, hour, five minutes running time and just 
just let go. Mm. Well, do me a favor when all of this clears and, and you got the Christmas song out, promise me you'll come into the studio in, in D.C. when you're in D.C. Uh, for sure. For all sure. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Tommy Lee is our guest and the new album is called Andro, which is now available iTunes and Amazon and anywhere you can get a CD, I'm sure. Do yep. people, is there a website people can go to to keep in touch with you and social media and all that? You, you can go to TommyLee.com or, and you can, come, if you go there, you can find me everywhere. I'm pretty right. easy to find. Well, you're looking great and sounding great as always, Tommy. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me. And, uh, Hi, everybody out there. <laughs> yeah. You want to say anything to the troops that are tuned in? Yes. Yes. What's up, fellas, ladies? Um, just want to say that I love you. I love the hell out of you. And um, my father was uh, in, uh, served for years. And I have nothing but love and respect, man. Um, it's because of you guys I get to do what I do. And I love you. Mwah. <laughs> he's the amazing incomparable tommy lee thank you so much for joining us my name is larry london you are watching border crossings thanks for tuning in <laughs> <laughs>